it's hard not to notice that all of our candidates for county executive, Democrats and Republicans, are men. Now, with the possibility that the U.S. Supreme Court may shift responsibility for abortion laws to local governments, may modify Roe versus Wade, do you feel that you as candidates have any role in protecting women's rights in Montgomery County, Mr. Elrich? Please start this round of answers. Yeah, I don't think everybody's going to disagree on this. We absolutely are going to protect women's rights in Montgomery County. Uh, we put a million dollars into the budget to accelerate what was originally planned from state legislation for a couple of years from now. Um, the, they thought the future was then, the future is now. We've got to deal with it. We have to provide additional training for nurses. We're going to have to work with doctors to be able to provide a different additional facilities to do abortions. Abortions do not need to be done in clinics and they can be done in other places. We've got the ability to help facilitate, to facilitate doctors to find the capacity to be able to do that. I guarantee you, we are not gonna cooperate with Texas and any of these other crazy places that are talking about hunting down women and prosecuting. You know, if somebody comes here, I'm not asking them why they came here. I am not gonna, we are never gonna provide medical information. It'd be a violation of HIPAA, if nothing else. And we're going to make sure people are safe. And we're going to actually go to other jurisdictions and suggest to their employers, maybe you want to move to Montgomery County because your women employees need to be safe. You come to Montgomery County, we're racially diverse, we're committed to diversity, we respect everybody's rights, including women's rights and including the right to choose. Your, resident, your employees aren't going to have those rights in Texas. Maybe you should leave Austin and come to Montgomery County. We have more to offer. Mr. James, you're next. Um, yes, yeah, certainly I think uh, we're safe within our, our boundaries. I'd like to see uh, uh, some uh, funding there. And the way we get funding is we save the $9 billion off the transportation boondoggles and, 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 and open our doors to uh, women that uh, need to go somewhere and maybe even uh, you know, provide free abortions and maybe even some uh, transportation stipends. But the way I would do it is not through the government, is I would actually look to nonprofits and, and provide them funding um, because I think they would be much more effective at it. Um, what I, w I think we should and we should have a responsibility to address is that uh, four times more women of color have abortions, five times more women of low income have abortions. And so I would like to, uh, to address those issues and solve that pressure on a woman, you know, do, do, do I have another kid and, and make my existing family suffer? And, and, and we should get the, uh, the, the church ladies that are dead set against abortion to take responsibility on that end of things. Because uh, sure, sure there should be, a, and I have two daughters, and so I, I don't want the government to tell them what they need to do with their bodies. Um, but I think we, we can also help reducing the number of abortions just by uh, building wealth. And like I said, home ownership is one of the best ways to build generational wealth so that their kids aren't faced with the same dilemma of, uh, you know, having, do I have a growing family or do I, I, I need to take care of the kids that I already have? I was a son of a, uh, my mother was a single mom for a good number of years. Uh, she had five kids. She worked three jobs sometimes and we had paper routes and babysat. And uh, so I understand the pressure some of these women face uh, and we need to reach out and help them. And the transportation savings, we can afford to do that. Hans Raymer, you're next. Well, thank you. So first of all, I'd like to associate myself with the county executive's comments. Uh, his commitment to meeting the crisis with providing abortion care is one that I share. And I think, uh, you know, as county executive, I will be 100% dedicated to ensuring that anyone who needs care and comes to this county from outside, uh, we will figure out how to be supportive. Uh, so let me, let me shift the focus a little bit and just talk a little bit more pragmatically about being a parent. And I know that that's a lot of moms are experiencing tremendous stress through COVID. We need a county executive who is committed to having safe in-person school because when parents can't have their children in daycare or in school, it means many of them can't work. I have talked to so many 
moms who are absolutely at the end of their rope. They are saying to me, my employer doesn't value my contribution because I can't show up and my job requires me to show up. I'm afraid that my career has suffered a significant setback. We need an executive who is going to lead this community through the process and have a better reopening of schools than what we had in January or September of this year. Help our child care providers manage this more successfully than they are even now today because women need help with their children. It's, it's a crisis. Our parents are facing a crisis. We need more pre-K. We need more after-school programming. We need all of these resources and supports so that it's a, you, know, you can have more success and feel more confident and have a, have a better career in this county because your children are getting their, their needs met. Mr. Sullivan, as the only Republican on this panel, what is your view of the future of abortion in Montgomery County and the posture a county executive should take? I believe that, <clears throat> that this issue was actually settled 30 years ago. Uh, I think it was called ballot question six, and at the end of the day, it's the job of the county executive to uphold the law. So whatever the law is, and is decided by the state of Maryland, that's my job to uphold the law. Um, so I'm not going to engage in the hyperbole um, and everything's a crisis. My job, or anybody's job up here really, is to maintain and follow the law. Mr. Blair? So what's happening at the Supreme Court is outrageous. It's, it's literally taking us back 50 years. And so we've got to do everything at the local level to protect women's health, to protect their right to choose. And I'm confident that we'll do that, knowing Montgomery County the way I do. Um, we also need to be working with our state delegation to make sure that our state laws are airtight um, and there's no room for misinterpretation. Misinter um, but when you think about Annapolis and the role that the county executive can play, it can be much broader than it is today, right? We have, you have 32 delegates. And so it's not just about protecting women's rights or expanding access to health care. There's huge opportunities there. And I look at our 32 de delegates, and I spent much time with them this past session, and they all did a good job. They brought back tens of millions of dollars here, millions of dollars there. Um, meanwhile, in Prince George's County, Angela also Brooks, she brought back $2.6 billion. $400 million along the blue line to invest near FedEx Field with an amphitheater, a civic center, a library, uh, a market hall. And I think about what kind of investment that would be for areas like White Oak and how we can really spur that development. And so executive leadership um, is what we need. Because clearly we have the ideas, you heard them today. Um, we have the talent in Montgomery County, we have the funding, but we need someone who knows how to get things done. And that's what I bring to this equation, right? And as an executive, you're setting those ambitious goals, right? Then you're making sure you have the right talent in place. You're removing the obstacles, right? You're holding people accountable and you're getting things done. And that's the kind of leadership that I'm gonna to bring to Montgomery County.